bears. They've shared our world through the ages, feared, revered, and beloved as favorite toys, intelligent animals, powerful symbols, and even constellations. And it's hard not to respect anything so big and muscular, so accomplished at hunting and unbeatable in a fight. But people have also recognized bears' intelligence, playfulness, adaptability, and their uncanny resemblance to humans. We have even elevated bears to the sky, right to the top of the heavens. The constellations of the Big and Little Dipper, known to some as the Great Bear and the Little Bear, revolve around the North Star at the tip of the Little Bear's tail. Since the invention of ships, this has been the steady beacon to help mariners navigate safely on the high seas. The ancient Greeks believed the great bear was Callisto, mistress of the chief god Zeus, and the little bear, their son Arcus. Hindu mythology placed these constellations at the heart of the universe, a spiral of energy controlling the seasons, the weather, and the crops. Some Native American tribes also believed that it was their bears, the grizzlies and the black bears, who changed the seasons. Early spring, after a five-month hibernation, a black bear mother emerges with her new cubs, born in the winter den. She'll spend the next two to three years protecting and teaching them. It'll be a tough and testing time. They'll need to cover hundreds of square miles in a constant quest for food. And the odds are only one of the three youngsters will survive into adulthood. It was the bear's great skill at hunting and gathering that most impressed early people in Europe. 30,000 years ago, they vied for dwelling space with the bears, evidenced by floors scattered with bear bones, and caves in southern France adorned with bear paintings. But most impressive were the skulls of the cave bear, a massive animal twice the size of today's brown bear with huge canine teeth. Perhaps out of fear or to impress the neighbors, our ancestors arranged these skulls to point towards the cave entrance as if to placate the bear's spirit. The largest of all bears was the North American bulldog bear that lived two million years ago. It was three times the size of today's grizzly and many times the size of all bears common ancestor, the dawn bear. This wouldn't have scared a dog, the closest relative to the bear. Today, there are eight species of bear ranging over most of the Northern Hemisphere and a little slice of South America. Their size ranges from the Malaysian sun bear, which is no bigger than a human, to the polar bear, which when standing is over 10 feet tall. It's the largest land predator on Earth. It's a far cry from the lush privacy of forest that the panda and the sloth bear prefer. One of the rarest bears is South America's spectacle bear, named for the unique spectacle markings around its eyes. It's a bear seldom seen, living in the most remote mountainsides of the Andes. Grizzlies are easier to find. They're North American brown bears, like the Kodiaks of Alaska. Grizzlies aren't called grizzly because they're mean, but because the silver tips on their fur make them look grizzled, like a man with graying hair. And there's the Asiatic black bear, known to local people as the moon bear, 
because of the pattern on its chest. But the most common of all bears is the American black bear, a strange name since it can come in brown, cinnamon, honey, slate, and even white. A ninth species of bear was introduced in 1902. It was all due to one man, the American president, Theodore Teddy Roosevelt, who took part in a bear hunt on an official visit to the state of Mississippi. By all accounts, it was an unsuccessful and frustrating day. By the end of it, the president had shot nothing. In an effort to provide the president with at least one trophy, a bear was brought and tethered to a tree. But for the president, there was no sport in shooting an animal without a fair chance. The story about the president hit the press, and a toy shop in Brooklyn, New York, capitalized on it. It began selling a new kind of doll, Teddy's Bear. The toy caught on, and soon, teddy bears were selling like hotcakes. The teddy evolved into colorful characters and childhood friends. Its features softened to make it cuddlier, and some became household names. But people forgot that bears are really dangerous wild animals. A.A. A. Milne, creator of Winnie the Pooh, even published a verse to warn about the dangers. Bears sit waiting, ready to eat, the sillies who tread on the lines in the street. In the days of the Wild West, before the teddy bear was invented, there was no doubt about the danger of bears. In fact, some people took advantage of the fact. The story goes that rough and ready Western men sometimes tried to provoke bears to attack because the scars on the face were a mark of manhood and thought irresistible to women. And for some Native American tribes, the killing of a bear, especially a grizzly, and the wearing of its skin was a sign of heroism and masculinity. Bears stand as symbols of strength and bravery. Sports teams and the Stutz Bearcat car took the animal's mighty name. Inspired by the bear's power, the Roman army was preceded by standard bears in bearskins. And a 13th century Icelandic saga describes the crazed fighting fury of the berserkers who believed that the bearskins they wore made them invulnerable. Even today, the guards at Buckingham Palace wear about three feet of bearskin on the tops of their heads. Perhaps bears have so stimulated the human imagination because, in many ways, they're like humans. Their eyes face forward, and they can stand upright. They'll sometimes use their front paws as hands to pass food to their mouths the same way humans do. And bears even walk like people with a flat foot and a heel and toes. But when it comes to running, bears are in a league with horses. Even the huge lumbering grizzly can travel at 30 miles an hour to run down an elk. Many cultures in the world have believed that bears are humans. The Inuit imagined they regularly took off their fur and relaxed in their human form. Of course, bears don't have tails. In Arctic legend, a fox persuaded a bear to use its tail as a fishing line. But the lake slowly froze. Feeling the pull and thinking it was a fish, the bear jumped up leaving its tail stuck firmly in the ice.
More than 250,000 years ago, the polar bear evolved from brown bears, which migrated north. Their paws developed tiny suction cups for gripping the ice, and their fur turned white to blend in with the ice. But their fur didn't just change color. It turned into a super efficient heating system. Each hair of a polar bear is hollow. Like an optical fiber, it sends the sun's energy straight to the bear's skin, which, because it's black, holds the heat. It does this so well that on a heat-sensitive infrared camera, a polar bear is almost invisible. Fur and a thick layer of blubber, such effective insulation that polar bears often get so hot they need to cool off in the icy Arctic waters. Legend has it that the fat of the bear was put to use in medieval Europe to cure baldness. In ancient China, it was believed that pandas were once all white, but changed their color when they attended the funeral of a little girl. As a sign of respect, the pandas had spread ashes on their arms. And with their ash-covered paws, they hugged each other and wiped away their tears, leaving the markings they have today. The panda has the largest skull of any bear, a third the weight of the whole skeleton. It's not to accommodate a bigger brain, but to anchor the massive jaw muscles and teeth it needs to eat its favorite food, bamboo. Pandas even have grown a sixth digit on their paws, the better to hold the bamboo. But it's so low in nutrients that they have to eat it morning, noon, and night. Every day, a panda eats through enough bamboo to fill 15 supermarket carts. It's the opposite for the Indian sloth bear, whose diet includes a rich supply of ants and termites. Its mouth is specially shaped for the job. Long lips to form a tube, and no front teeth to block the flow. The bear sucks up insects like a vacuum cleaner. Noisy, but deficient. Other bears have a more varied diet, but still have strong preferences, especially for honey. It's a favorite food of the Malaysian sun bear, with furless paws to help it climb the trees to reach bees' nests, and thick skin to protect it from the stings. As with any animal, a bear's senses are primarily tools for locating food. Its sight is just average, but a bear's ability to stand upright gives it a lot of range. The animal's hearing, though sharp enough, is not remarkable. But its sense of smell is a hundred times stronger than a human's. A polar bear can sniff out a seal, its favorite prey, from 15 miles away. And against the bear's powerful jaw, the seal stands little chance. With the exception of the polar and the panda, most bears have a varied diet of plants, fish, insects, and fruit. In fact, they'll eat just about anything, even garbage. Bears also use food as medicine and seem to know which plants will cure their ailments. Native American tribes coveted this knowledge and danced to ask the bear to show them where to find the best berries. Their medicine men believed that wearing necklaces of the bear's claws and teeth would give them wisdom. What they didn't know was that if you cut a bear's tooth in half, 
you can tell its age by the number of rings inside. 30 years would be the average lifespan. The Chinese think that eating parts of a bear's body can confer certain admirable bear attributes. The favorite is bear's paw stew, but fortunately it's now usually made with tofu. When bears themselves eat, they prefer to dine alone. But where there's only one snack bar, they have no choice but to eat together. With fierce competition over prime locations, like a rich salmon stream, a sneaky look can be taken as an insult. Bears are happiest alone, and they'll go to great lengths to protect their privacy. They spend time marking boundaries and claiming territory by scratching bark off trees and laying trails of personal scent. A panda's scent glands leave an almost eye-watering odor, which to other pandas is like a voicemail message with details of age, sex, and even the time of day that the scent was put down. Thousands of miles away, bears in northern regions must get as fat as possible in order to survive the winter months. An internal alarm is triggered by the autumn drop in temperature. Hormones surge with one command, eat. For 20 hours a day, a grizzly hunts out the richest and most nutritious food to put on an extra eight inches of fat all over. Winter finally arrives. The food's gone and the bear seeks shelter. A big male grizzly is unlikely to be worried about anything attacking him and so might rough it in the open on a pile of leaves or branches. But smaller bears and especially mothers with cubs need greater protection. A sheltered hollow of a tree is good, but a cave is even better. Although sometimes their stomach may be bigger than their eyes, and fitting in is like squeezing a cork into a bottle. For humans, the sudden disappearance of the world's bears in winter was always a puzzle. But as the ancient Greeks knew, at the very least, it was a sure sign that the weather was about to change. And when bears reappeared in the spring, the North American Cree people took it as a symbol of hope. Exactly how bears hibernate is still a mystery. Hibernation is practiced by many small mammals like chipmunks, usually involves lowering the body temperature, slowing down the heartbeat, and generally just turning down the rate of living. Every few days, these animals open their eyes, find something to eat, and get rid of their waste. But bears don't do that. For an astonishing three to seven months, they never get up, never eat, and never get rid of waste. Somehow, they're able to recycle the toxins in their body poisons that would kill any other animal. Scientists at NASA would love to solve the mystery of bear hibernation. If they could crack the secret, they might be able to put astronauts into the same kind of suspension for long journeys into deep space. The only bears in cold climates that miss out on their winter sleep are the ones that become mothers. After mating in the spring, the female's fertilized eggs are put on hold. They'll develop once the female is inside the den. These rare pictures show the tiny cubs just a couple of weeks old. They were born blind, naked, and shapeless. And it was believed that the mother's constant licking molded their bare identity, licking them into shape.
When they were born, they were just one six hundredth the size of their mother. On the same scale, a human baby would be no bigger than a walnut. Spring comes and the bears begin to wake up. Their muscles are weak, their bones are creaky, and their heads are groggy. After three to four months of hibernation, who could blame them for looking like a bear with a sore head? But for the year-old cubs, it is a delight to see the outside world again and to have a chance to stretch their limbs. Their mother, however, has other plans. Nearly half her body weight will have been lost during hibernation, and so it's important to find food as soon as possible. The weeks pass and the sun's rays grow stronger. It's now May, and everywhere, newborn cubs are emerging. This is a brand new adventure into a brightly lit world, and all the knowledge they'll need to survive the coming years will be taught by their mother. Lessons begin immediately. After all, there is a lot to be learned about being a bear. But bears aren't always cute. They do occasionally kill people. In North America, two or three a year. A small number compared to those killed by lightning, snakes, or trains. But it's enough to make you cautious around bears. And in bear country, it's a good idea to wear bells on your back and whistle while you walk so they can hear you coming. Often bears won't run away, they'll hide and watch you from the bushes. Bear attacks usually happen if a bear's been surprised, if a person comes between a mother and her cubs, or separates a bear from food. In other words, give bears space. There are lots of old cautionary tales of bears. The story of Goldilocks may have warned children against wandering into the forest. And in Aesop's fables, two travelers met a bear in a forest. In a cowardly panic, one man scrambled up a tree, leaving his friend below. So he lay down and played dead. The bear sniffed him and walked away. What did the bear whisper to you? Asked the man who'd been up the tree. He said, never trust a coward. But people can make bears more dangerous than they need to be. In America's Yellowstone National Park, it became fashionable to feed them, so the bears linked people with food. And sometimes, the people got hurt. The management banned bear feeding, but for the bears, old habits died hard. And they still think that any picnic basket is for them. If that happens, it's best not to argue. But there are ways for humans to live with bears. On the icy shores of Canada's Hudson Bay lies the tiny town of Churchill on the polar bear's migration route to their winter hunting ground. No one is eager to test out the polar bear's sense of road safety walking down Main Street. The answer? a personal ferry service. Out of town and a few miles closer to the icy hunting ground. It 
It may speed up their journey, but perhaps they'll give Churchill a miss next year. Six of the eight species of bears are in danger of becoming extinct, despite concerted efforts to protect them. The most vulnerable is the giant panda. There are only a thousand left in the world in the forests of Southeast China. But the international effort to save them has been massive, and China has made panda killing a capital crime. Perhaps our change of heart is all down to one man, Teddy Roosevelt, and the day he let the bear cub live. Since then, people have been growing up with replicas. There are now thousands of teddies for every living bear. And antique bears are valuable collector's items. An old Siberian tale seems to have understood the bear's true worth. The little bear, that's now the constellation, used to live on the clouds. One day he caught a glimpse of people on the ground below. He decided to come to Earth and dispense the wisdom of the heavens. In gratitude, the people rewarded him with a bag of silver to take home. But he returned the favor, using the silver to make the stars shine. Like the myth surrounding the great bear constellation, it's a story that seems to lift these powerful yet lovable creatures off the earth and into the heavens.